I know what you're thinking, March 17th, you're gonna come to here and ask me for a bottle of one of our sourced and certified Irish whiskeys, like Old Tom Horan, uh, made in Ireland. And of course, our most popular sourced and certified Irish cream, Michael's Irish cream. Maybe do Irish car bombs and uh, get some uh, a nice stout, because it's St. Patrick's Day, that's what you're supposed to do. That's not my subject though. It could be a little bit, I drink this stuff, but no, I'm gonna put this down. My name is Larry Baker. I am a certified level two sommelier and a senior wine and spirit specialist here at ABC Fine Wines and Spirits in beautiful downtown North Miami Beach, Florida. Of course, it's fun to drink Irish whiskey and God, I love that Michael's uh, Irish cream during the holidays. People just went bananas over the gift sets, how good that Irish cream is. But just like Thanksgiving, just like other holidays, just like Cinco de Mayo, where people think margaritas and beers, I am a sommelier and I'm telling you, a traditional St. Patrick corned beef and cabbage meal can be much more better paired than with beer or with Irish whiskey, not that these would be bad things, but with wine, yes, vino. Uh, it's similar, my choices of wine would be very similar to pairing almost a Thanksgiving meal because we have a, a, a corn, obviously it's a brisket that has been corned or cured with pickling spices. So we have a cured meat and it's salty meat, uh, something like that. And then we have cabbage, and hopefully the cabbage was cooked in the same water as the corned beef was. And your boiled potato, this is plain and carrot, but it's all about the corned beef and that, that saltiness and uh, that, that certainly pickling spices that make corned beef and cabbage such a St. Patrick's Day tradition. Yes, I'm not Irish at all, but everybody becomes Irish on St. Patrick's Day. It's good luck, right? Uh, I'm a little leprechaun, but my mom, you know, may she rest in peace, always made corned beef and cabbage. My father was in the meat business, but I have paired this a million times with wine, and I want to show you what I think. Number, numero uno choice. Riesling, but not sweet Riesling. I love this wine from Pfluger. This is from the uh, Falls region of, uh, uh, of Germany. Uh, this is a Pfluger, uh, a, a dry Riesling, a dry Riesling, 12% alcohol. Pfluger means plow. I've talked about this wine because the good acidity, the, the Christmas, the apparent fruit that's in there, but it's not at all, not even what I would call a cabinet Riesling. It's a bone dry Riesling with very good acidity that matches so deliciously with the corned beef. I might even put a little bit in the water that I'm boiling the corned beef with. I just think that this would be literally the ideal number one pair, okay? I always talk about rosé, but rosé bubbles like Thanksgiving, so I said that this pairing would be very similar to what I would choose uh, for uh, Thanksgiving, what I would choose. I like this Colalto, Colalto rosé spumante style, uh, made from the Manzoni grape. This was a, uh, a hybrid grape um, made from uh, this professor, uh, 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 Luigi Manzoni, that was his name, Luigi Manzoni, and he uh, works, he's a viticulturist. He took the very, very, the sweet Moscato grape and crossbred it with an ancient red varietal uh, called Riboso Piave, and blended it together and created his grape called Encrocio uh, Manzoni, the Manzoni grape. Not Ranzoni like the pasta Manzoni. This is an extra dry, it means a little off dry. Just good acidity, good rose petal flowers, uh, floral notes to it, strawberry, a little fresh squeeze of citrus, which really works with saltiness of the corned beef. So this would be great, washing away the palate from that. It could be a little fatty, that's the best taste in corned beef that has a little bit of fat. Fat equals flavor when it comes to corned beef. And I think it would be a perfect match for the cabbage and all that, a whole meal. Uh, it's a great little, uh, be Irish and drink Italian uh, sparkling wine or German sparkling wine. Um, I love Beaujolais, just like I like Beaujolais, but I like Cru Beaujolais. Cru Beaujolais, there are 10 vineyards or 10 villages that get certain status by the region of Beaujolais that controls it. And we have two of them from the same producer. You could drink a Beaujolais village from many different villages. I like Domaine Bouillat. We're finally back in stock of the two crews that we sell. and. Uh, uh, you could do the Moulin of All, which is on sale this month, normally $19.99 for $16.99.
Uh, this is Moulin Avant, which means windmill. This is Domaine Bouillat. They are an organic property, uh, the way they farm. I've been there last July. Um, and Moulin Avant, it's a Beaujolais made with Gamay, 100% Gamay Noir, but uh, it's called a, they don't put Beaujolais on the, on the actual, they put the name of the crew. There are 10 villages. Now you know nine more. And my favorite one that we sell from here is the Morgan. It's been out of stock for a while, but the 2017 Morgon uh, is just a beautiful domain bouillat. Now you have eight more to study of the villages. Uh, all right, I'll give you a hint. One is Fleury, which we don't carry. But that would be great too, if you can find a Fleury. Uh, this would be good, it has that floral note, that's where it gets its name, Fleury. But this Morgon um, is, 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 doesn't even taste. It tastes like Pinot Noir, but it has enough uh, acidity and lightness and fruit forwardness that both of these crew Beaujolais would drink almost like a red burgundy instead of a, a, a Gamay or a Beaujolais. Uh, we're not talking Beaujolais Nouveau here. We're talking serious uh, Beaujolais, crew Beaujolais. And uh, this would definitely be a great match with corned beef and cabbage. So, that would be my three choices. I don't have anything else in the wagon, but that is what I would go with. So, yes, you can do Irish whiskey. You can do the stouts, and most people are going to do beer, just like they do on... Cinco de Mayo, and I approve that Mexican food goes better uh, with something to off-heat the, the spices. And I'm telling you that wine, can you drink your Irish car bombs later and certainly have some Michaels for dessert over ice cream. I don't know if that's Irish, but you can put some creme de menthe from Jacquin's on there, make it green, but Michaels on ice cream, don't even get me started with that. But uh, similar to the corned beef and cabbage, I mean the turkey meal, I want that. That, that same saltiness or the hams for Easter, I'm gonna be talking about similar wines like that. We talked about a dry Riesling, make sure it's a dry Riesling. Pfluger is what I recommend. I love that. Dry Riesling, good acidity. It is the number one pick I have. We talked about a Spumante Rosé from Italy with the Manzoni grape that has an extra dry, a little bit of off dry flavors, strawberry, rose petals, a little bit of squeeze of citrus, which works great to cut through the fattiness and the saltiness of the corned beef. And then two Cru Beaujolais from Domaine Bouillat, organically, about the minimal amount of sulfites I've ever seen used in any winery, almost next to none. They even make one that has zero, literally, uh, that, that we don't carry in the store, but it's uh, called Natural. So that would be the choices. Riesling, sparkling rosé, uh, it doesn't have to be these, but I would recommend that these, these are. And the two from Domaine Bouillat, Cru Beaujolais from Morgan, and one from Moulin Avon. But I would definitely recommend the, the Morgan. For further information on how to pair your wines and these wines, or for other information uh, about uh, anything I talked about here, even the Irish whiskey or the Michael's Irish cream, go to our website at abcfws.com or always hit me up by following this blog and you know I will answer every single question that you have 24 hours a day, seven days a week once you find out my contact information. So remember, wine is not for snobs. It's not even just for Irish people on St. Patrick's Day. It's for everyday people like you and me and leprechauns. Happy St. Paddy's Day.